What is wrong with this camera? Hi, it's me again. What a blinding day. About time we had a couple of blinding days. <laughs> the weekend was atrocious. What it? Weekend was atrocious. And also, well, doubly so for me, not just because of the weather. The car goes in for repair tomorrow after that Aldi reversed into me. And uh, I come out from where I was on the weekend. The exhaust has fallen off and I've got a cracked windscreen. So that's, uh, that's me suffering from open wallet surgery in a couple of days time. Never mind. But anyway, I've got a couple of stories to go through, as always, and some of your comments to talk about. So, uh, well, let's have a look. So I was on Grimsby Live the other day. Don't ask me why. I'm not from Grimsby or ever been to Grimsby. I don't think I've ever been to Grimsby, no. But I saw this story on Grimsby Live. Seven Grimsby views on the BBC licence fee. Keep it or scrap it. I thought that was interesting. That's the kind of thing that sounds like it would interest me. Doesn't it? So let's have a look at what these seven Grimsby people have said and see if it's anything different to what we're always saying, eh? So Tyron said, a different payment model could be a better way to offer the service product. I wouldn't mind paying 15 quid a year just for the radio stations. Or just to use the BBC Sounds app. Well, that's where they're going with it. That's what they want. The BBC want all the radio on the Sounds app. They don't even want to broadcast radio anymore. They're saying that they want to they want to move a lot of local programming onto BBC Sounds app. So yeah, he could be onto something there, Tyron. In Canada, the CBC runs advertisements. The TV license is a good concept because the public broadcaster shouldn't have commercial interests. Okay, well our public broadcaster has multiple, multiple commercial offshoots using its own name and it owns 100% UK TV, which shows ads, and their BBC sells shows all around the world. So it has a lot of commercial interests. And don't even get me started on product placement. Oh yeah, don't know about that one. Amanda, maybe they should have advertisements to keep costs down. Yeah, I agree. I just, I, they're not beyond it, are they? But everyone behaves like they are. Andy says, in theory, as a tax, it's a bit much to stomach. I do believe the BBC should be self-funded. However, I'm torn because it will be to great detriment of the service provided by what is probably our best free-to-air broadcaster. Okay, well, you, you're allowed to have your opinion. I've got mine, you've obviously got yours. Detriment to a service provider, probably our best free to air broadcaster. There you go, do you agree with that? And Denise says, it's just so out of date and really awful, why don't millionaires pay it tenfold and others can have help in paying for it? It's just, why make it so complicated? Why make it so complicated? Just make them show ads and pay for themselves like other channels do. No. But yeah, some good points there from Grimsby. I just thought that was interesting. I also thought this was interesting. Not for the reason you may think. Because it led me down a new path and I learned something new about the BBC. Every day's a school day, right? So I was on the trade press for TV stuff. And I found this, look. Bonafide Films, ink still with BBC Studios. Oh, well, riveting, breaking news. I'm so excited by that, John. Yeah, right, I get that. But BBC, BBC's commercial interests, like studios and stuff like that, are investing massively, massively in private production companies. And in fact, they are buying them out, many of them, but letting them keep their names so no one knows they're part of the BBC. I do have a full list of it somewhere, but not handy. But there's a thing here, where are we? I said some brands. Oh God, no, I think I've got the wrong thing up. Oh no, here's some, look, label investments. So you can see there, I'll put it on the screen. That's just some of them, but they are going through the industry and buying up a lot of independent production companies and letting them keep their original names and so no one knows they're part of the BBC now. And they're commercial. But it also means the BBC they're halfway to building a bloody monopoly because they own all the independent production companies in the UK. 
they have to sell shows elsewhere so everything goes through the bbc they're making money hand over fist they wouldn't be doing it if there wasn't profit to be had would they and that led me down this right because in that article that bona fide films one there's a statement at the bottom from mark lindsay who's president for scripted stuff for bbc studios productions limited is that a bit oh, hang on what was the name of this company well oh. oh it's bbc studios investments limited was where that led me i didn't even know that existed bbc studios investments limited new one on me so i pop over to company's house as is my right to do to have a look at what they've been up to and i find their filed accounts for the period ending 31st of march 22 and we scroll down here and it says investment income for 2022 is 3.6 million quid all right in the grand scheme of things especially in this industry yeah, it's not a lot of money is it but what i did find interesting was a bit further down in here where's it gone the company had no employees during the year or preceding year no director of the company received any remuneration okay so they've got no employees but they're turning over 3.6 million quid a year where's that going where's that going it's going offshore they're using this money to invest and where are we it says here bbc studios channels investment ontario limited which is in canada bbc studios distribution africa proprietary limited subsidy for south africa come on when are the bbc going to stop trading commercially using the bbc name how is this okay now how is this okay they're investing in productions all around the world using the bbc name how is this okay if you're okay to do this and you're okay to be a big global commercial production and whatever giant a media giant then you don't need a license fee anymore do you if you're capable of doing all of this you don't need the license fee anymore i'm afraid do you i just uh, i didn't know that one existed and uh, there, there's quite a lot of these private companies with the bbc name on it and i just I'm, i fail to understand how it's right i fail to understand how they're allowed to trade under the bbc name to make a commercial profit I, ju I just do not understand it i do not understand it and then uh, another story well it's not even another story gp news has really got it in for the bbc and now i don't know why worse than me i mean i'm bad but gb news is shocking <laughs> for how much they're picking on the bbc lately so i saw this one look bbc license fee on the brink as broadcaster told to look at new funding sources they're quoting this thing from Lucy, the, uh, the culture and media secretary, where she said something the other day, and it's being misquoted all over the shop, all over the shop. Most of the headlines are, the license fees looking to be scrapped. Uh, it's not, it's not. All this is, is she's asking the BBC to look at it, and the government are looking at it, that it's gonna become a tax. That's what's gonna happen. But nothing about it, nothing about it is scrapping off the licence fee completely and making the BBC stand on her own two feet. They're just, it's just a massive rehash. And GB News, it's a petting zoo here now. Petting zoo behind me. This is new. Don't know what it's all about. They got a tortoise. A pet a tortoise. I don't know what that bird animal is on there. I don't know. No idea. But yeah, GB, good old GB news. I, I, I used to watch a bit of it, like on the YouTube clips when it was launched. I haven't watched any of it for ages. I watched any of it for ages. But anyway, in other and more interesting news, may I present to you this headline. I sell vagina lollipops for £35. People think it's crazy, but I've made a fortune. It is important to have have a second income stream at the minute as i said before i do stock photography i take up my hobby and used to be my career 
it's taking photographs. So uh, yeah, stock photography. It's what I do to make a few quid. I never thought about lollipops in that manner. Well, good for her. She's found a way to make a few quid. You want a vagina lollipop? Do you want to know how? It, it's as bad as it sounds. I've already read the article. There. She said, I thought I need something that not everybody does. And I've always loved lollipops, even when I was little. This would see her become very familiar with a confectionery aisle in Home Bargains. And the Sweet Tooth model revealed, I buy lollipops and I put them in my vagina and I would sell them. I buy them for 80p and I sell them for 35 quid. There you go. She's from Dundee. Do you want a Dundee flavoured vagina lollipop? Here, I, I bought this way round for a change. Look, there's a skate park behind me. Pretty cool. And in the summer, not open yet. Yeah, I'll turn this around. Look. Look. This is a water park, like a splash park thing. It's quite good in the summer, it all goes off. And then there's like a big galleon to play on. I don't normally come down this way because there's normally millions of kids about, aren't there? But it's good to prom, you know. It's quite a cool place. Come on, hello. It's quite a cool place, Promenade Park. It's changed a lot. When I was a kid, when I was like 12, 13, started hanging down here with my mates, this bit where this water park thing was, was an arcade. I used to play the teddy machines and learn to become addicted on fruit machines and stuff like that. There's a lot more going on now. A lot more going on. It's quite cool. I spent a lot of time down here as a kid. I miss living, I'd love to live back in Malden. Yeah, I just can't afford it. Can't afford it. But then, I don't know where I'm going to be living soon if this flat don't come off. I do have a plan B, which is something I was working on this weekend. I don't want to talk about it too much because I'm hoping I won't need plan B. But yeah, anyway, lollipops. Do you want to buy a lollipop for 35 quid? I don't. Right, comments. Got a few comments to go through. Have a look. Shelby, what I might do is pause you for a second because I don't like, and there's loads of people about. I'll pause you for a second, bear with. Sorry about that. Yeah, I just, um, when it's really busy about, there's loads of kids and that. I don't think it's fair, really, walking about like a numpty filming. They're just trying to enjoy their day. Or I want loads of people in it. I don't think it's fair. Right, where were we? Your comments. That's where we were, wasn't it? The thing is, times have changed. In 1986, there was no YouTube and streaming services. The BBC had a captive audience. You start to feel old when you can remember only four channels and you used to look at the football results on Teletext. God, Teletext was rubbish. I remember, I used to go on the joke pages on Teletext. Yeah, you make a fair point. That's why the viewing figures, like the most viewed TV show in the history of the country, is that episode of EastEnders. There was only a couple of channels back there, wasn't it? I remember when we first got Analog Sky. God, that was exciting. Analog Sky, Discovery Channel, Sky One. God, that was exciting. That was exciting. But yeah, you're right. This, um, that's why the BBC can't compete anymore. How can they? How can they possibly compete? Well, there's so many things. There's people that literally just watch YouTube now. You can't compete with that, can you? Traditional TV is dying. It's pretty down here today. Look at this. Not that way, because there's loads of kids on a school trip. Look at the boat. It is nice down here, especially on a nice day like this. No oh, else. Looking at your female admirers on here, I think you'd have a fan base for your OnlyFans page. Wouldn't catch me paying to view anyone's content, but plenty of desperate people to pay for it. KP will be doing well financially. Yeah, I can't imagine. I mean, what? There are men that do it. There are men that do it. I'm not sure I've got the qualities required to be successful. <laughs> oh God, can you imagine me getting my ass out on OnlyFans for 15 quid a month? I'm all right. I'll pass. And the problem with stuff like that is, you know, all these girls do it and everything. You can't erase those pictures, they're on the internet forever. 
Just because you close your OnlyFans down when your kid becomes a teenager doesn't mean those pictures are gone. They're still out there. Yeah, I'd hate, wouldn't you hate that? He was like a 14, 15 year old boy at school. And all your mates found your mum's pictures on the internet. Yeah, so many fights. What else we got? 13 quid a month may not be a lot, but it's still nearly a week's worth of lecky for us and our vehicle's fuel bill a week. Don't watch, don't need, why pay? Well said. Yeah, well said. And I get this comment all the time. All the time I'm getting this comment from people. It's only 13 quid a month, just bloody pay it. Yeah, yeah I'm, I'm happy for you if you're of the sentiment that it's only 13 quid. Sadly, not everyone is. That's what brought me into this fight. You know, it wasn't 13 quid there, it was a few years ago, it was a bit lower. Couldn't afford it, I had nothing. I didn't have that a month. So I had to start looking at what I could cut. And that's what brought me into this fight. Granted, I'm, in the I'm very lucky and feel privileged to be in the position now where I could afford to pay it and not matter. But I don't need it, so why should I? But yeah, 159 quid a year, 13 quid a month, is a lot of money to a lot of people. So I don't like that comment where just pay it, it's only 13 quid a month. And I get it all the time. Hi John, do most of European residents like Spain, France, Germany receive and watch live UK TV broadcasts have to pay a license? Nope. And uh, we both know you know that. But yeah, I spent a lot of time in Spain the last few years, as you well know. And uh, big business out there. We watch live TV when I was in Spain. What are you going to do? All the pubs have it, IPTV is a big thing. They've all got Sky Sports and everything on. No one's paying the subscription for that. It's all dodgy. You know, to any pub, you can watch EastEnders, Coronado Street, whatever. All live, they ain't paying for it. No license fee, no subscription fees. Well, apart from for the, I, the dodgy IPTV stream. Yeah. You know, I know many, many expats who, uh, who watch broadcast UK TV. They don't pay for it. Don't pay a license fee. How are you going to police it? I'm saying I did it when I was out there because again, how are you going to police it? Hi John, will you give up YouTube when the BBC scrapped the license fee? Thought about that, you know. I've often thought that would be it, mate. They probably would. And if that's the case, that's the case. You know, but I do enjoy making the videos. I do quite like it. And I thought. I've tried to launch a couple of other channels in the past. I have. But um, I just ain't got the time. I ain't got the time. I, start, I used to work on a car channel with a mate of mine. We used to do car stuff. That was quite good fun. But we don't do that. That stopped years ago. And then uh, I launched a couple of others. So I got Agony Chili. Because I quite like doing the Agony Arm videos, right? But... I haven't got the time to do it. I just don't have the time to do it. Now maybe if this thing all stops, I will have the time to do it. Eh? I'll probably do something, just not these. Not because I need the money or anything or trying to make money from it. I quite enjoy filming. I enjoy playing about with the cameras and I enjoy editing. And I enjoy interacting with you lot in the comments, but yeah. I wouldn't need to do any of these, would I? Let's hope that day does come, hey. Yeah, all out of comments. Oh uh, yeah, I haven't really got anything else interesting to talk about, I don't think. So the car's going in, the insurer's gonna pick it up tomorrow. And it's gotta have a new wing, they've gotta fix the door. Gotta have a look at behind the wheel because there's a squeaking that shouldn't be there. But then I come back to it yesterday from where I was for the last few days and the exhaust floor is just all hanging off underneath, all rotten. And an exhaust on one of them things, a good few hundred quid and all, just for the back box. Plus the fitting, plus it's due a service with its silly oil. Bloody cars, this is why I can't have any money in the bank. Because of sodding cars. And I used to own two or three cars at a time. This is why I never had any money. So yeah, beans on toast for a couple of weeks. Get that paid for. I don't know. Be all right again, still no news on the flat. Like I said, I've got a plan B now. Because I don't want to stay in this cottage I'm renting. Don't like it. So, uh, yeah, plan B. That's what I've been doing the last couple of days is looking at that. 
But I won't tell you what it is because I still want plan A to be the one. But if it comes off, it comes off. But it'll be a lot more sunny if it does come off, let's put it like that. But yeah, nothing else to report really. So I'm gonna huff and puff up the top of this hill, head back to work. No. Uh, try and make some money to pay for the repairs on the car. <laughs> hey, and uh, yeah, thanks for watching. Hit the button if you haven't already. The like one and the subscribe one. Well, any button. Just press the button. And I'll see you in the next one whenever that will be. Ta-da.